Hi, I am Dr. Tanvir Ahmed. In this lecture I will talk about calf nutrition and feeding management from birth to weaning. Calf growth, productivity and health depends heavily on its nutrition and feeding management. In this video, I will discuss about development of the calves rumen and colostrum feeding for better growth and health of newborn. Why proper calf nutrition? Calf is a young one of bovine. Every heifer calf born on a dairy farm represents an opportunity to maintain or increase herd size, to improve the herd genetically, or to improve economic returns to the farm. A properly fed cow or buffalo, which is in good condition during pregnancy, should give birth to a healthy and well developed calf. The objectives of a good calf rearing and feeding program includes 1. High growth rate and weight gain at an appropriate time as per breed specifications. 2. Strong disease resistance in calf. 3. Development of a healthy and normal calf as future replacement. To achieve these targets economically, and to save milk for human consumption, a well-planned calf nutrition program is required. Calf Management Goals In general, nutrient intake and immune status, determine calf growth. Normally in Pakistan, calves rearing is practiced by feeding limited amounts of milk, or milk replacer, to minimize cost and force calves to consume dry feed, and become practicing ruminants. This approach is adequate, if it meets goals for growth rate, disease resistance, and weaning weight. Through this approach, it is possible to miss an opportunity, to enhance calf growth and development. The progressive calf management protocols, required fast growth, proper weaning age, and weight. As an example, for Holstein calves, with a 90 pound birth weight, these management protocols are average daily gain, 1.8 to 2.2 pounds per day, from birth to weaning, at 6 to 8 weeks. Weaning weight, 180 to 200 pounds at 7 weeks. Feed efficiency, 1.5 to 1.7 pounds of feed per pound of gain. Height gain, 6 to 8 inches. To achieve these goals, the dietary guidelines are described in Nutrient Requirements for Dairy Cattle, 2001, 7th edition by NRC. Though we don't have such criteria for our dairy breeds, but we can adopt good management practices, to, get maximum out of buffaloes and cow calves. Rumen Development At birth, the young calf's stomach, like the adult ruminant, is divided into four parts, although only the abomasum is functional, while calves' reticulum, rumen, and omasum are inactive and undeveloped. At this time, the abomasum, is similar to a human stomach, and has an inherent capacity of about, 2 liters. Therefore, from birth to about 2 weeks of age, the calf behaves like a monogastric animal. At 2 months of age, transition occur from non-ruminants to ruminants. At birth, the first three compartment are, about 30%, of total stomach capacity. At 3 months, about 70% of total stomach capacity. At maturity, 93% of total stomach capacity, and rumen is 80% of the total stomach capacity. At birth, how material or liquid is digested? At birth, only the abomasum is functional. The esophageal groove, also known as Reticular groove carry liquid from esophagus, 
to abomasum. Muscular folds of the reticulorumen form the esophageal groove and direct milk to the abomasum. In the suckling ruminant, liquids such as milk, after being swallowed, pass directly to the abomasum. A scientist, namely Home in 1806, appears to be the first to postulate that the esophageal groove was responsible for the diversion from the rumen. This groove extends, with two well-defined lips or pillars, from the cardiac end of the esophagus, over the dorsal wall of the reticulum, to the entrance of the omasum, a compartment which lies between the fermentation and secretory portions of the stomach in most species of ruminant. The floor of the groove is continuous, with a well-defined omasal canal, so that, when the lips contract to form a tube, liquids pass directly from the esophagus through the esophageal groove and omasal canal to the relatively large abomasum and do not enter either the reticulum or the rumen which, in the young animal, are small and undeveloped. What is required for rumen development? There are two components of rumen development. 1. Size of the rumen. 2. Epithelium development. By four weeks of age, if the calf is fed, only milk or milk replacer, the rumen size will be quite small, fibrous like roughages, bulky, non fermentable material, even, such as plastic sponges, result in expansion and muscular growth of rumen and reticulum, but it will not initiate epithelium development. If liquids are fed in increasing amounts, the abomasum grows in size, but the rumen remains proportionately small and grows only moderately. Lack of rumen development causes a slump in growth rates after weaning. Rumen papilla and epithelium development. VFA's introduction initiate papillary and total epithelium development thus result in thickening of rumen walls also. Papillary development is stimulated by the end products of microbial fermentation, specifically butyric acid, and, to a lesser extent, propionic acid. The calf fed on grains, in addition to milk shows more papillary development, and have much thicker, darker, and more vascularized rumen wall. Sodium butyrate is most effective for this development. This development in papillae and epithelium is due to increased blood flow to the papillae or due to slightly inflammatory response caused by acid damage to the epithelium. Colostrum feeding, why? Colostrum is the first mammary secretion produced after calving. Unlike in humans, the placenta of the cow keeps the maternal blood supply separate from that of the developing foetus. That's why, newborn calf, do not have antibodies in its bloodstream. How to have antibodies? Feeding colostrum is the only way that a newborn calf can receive antibodies immune globulin G from the mother. This is known as passive transfer of immunity. Keep in mind that only first milking colostrum will ensure passive transfer of immunity to newborn calves. Milk harvested between 24 and 72 hours is termed transition milk as its composition differs from colostrum. Transition milk is still very nutritious and can be fed to newborn calves, but it lacks antibodies. Milk composition changes, again when it is harvested 72 hours after calving, at this time it is considered as whole sellable milk. Failure of passive transfer means 
that calves do not have protective levels of antibodies in their bloodstream 36 to 72 hours after birth. Antibodies in the form of immune globulin decreases after the first milking. Feeding of second and subsequent milking may result in failure of passive transfer of immunity. As adapted from rearing healthy calf manual of dairy australia the prevalence of failure of passive transfer of immunity or fpt can be tested by blood sampling of 12 healthy calves not scouring or dehydrated between 24 hours and seven days of age for laboratory analysis of total protein it is recommended that this is done both at the beginning and peak of calving, when the prevalence of FPT is typically higher. A total protein value of 55 mg per mil, or above, indicates that successful passive transfer has occurred. Australian research had shown that these calves have half the odds of being treated with antibiotics or electrolytes compared to calves with values less than 50 mg per mil research indicates that values of 58 to 63 mg per mil may be even better to aim for the higher, the better. If 20 percenter or more of tested calves are below 55 mg per mil then better to review colostrum management system. Principles of colostrum feeding, 3 main principles of colostrum feeding includes quality of colostrum time of feeding and amount to be fed 1 colostrum quality for immunity three types of immunoglobulins ig can be found in colostrum immunoglobulin g igg makes up 70% to 80% of the immunoglobulins and helps identify and destroy invading pathogens. Immunoglobulin M, IgM, comprises 10% to 15% of immunoglobulins and serves as the first line of defense against septicemia. Immunoglobulin A, IgA, comprises the remaining 15% of immunoglobulins in colostrum and protects the mucosal surfaces, such as the intestine, from invasive pathogenic bacteria. Colostrum quality is measured by the amount of immunoglobulin G, IgG, it contains. IgG concentration must be greater than 50 gram per liter, the quality of colostrum is highest when collected immediately after the cow calves with the immunoglobulin content have by the second milking colostrum also contains vitamins minerals energy in the form of carbohydrate and fat and proteins needed for calf metabolism growth and for additional stimulation of the calves immune system hormones like insulin and growth factors IGF1 in colostrum also aid metabolism the second principles of colostrum feeding is time of feeding what is the best time of colostrum feeding time is of the essence in the transfer of immunity to the newborn calf the immunoglobulins found in colostrum are large proteins. Calves have openings in the small intestines to accommodate the protein's absorption, therefore, straight after birth, the calf's intestine absorbs the large IgG molecules easily. The intestine openings close shortly after birth. It has been noted that within six hours of birth. The intestine's ability to absorb IgG has decreased by 30 to 50 percent. Further, between 24 to 36 hours 
after birth, no more IgG, can be absorbed. Colostrum Best feeding time Colostrum, should be fed within one hour, after birth. Approximately 35% of ingested immunoglobulins can be absorbed when calves are fed colostrum immediately after birth, but this declines to less than 5% absorption of immunoglobulins when calves are fed 20 hours after birth. The third principles of colostrum feeding management is the proper Quantity of colostrum to be fed to calf. 1. Feed colostrum, at a rate of 12% to 15%, of the calf's body weight. 2. The first feeding, of colostrum should be at least 3 liters. This should be fed within the first 2 hours of birth. Another guide to colostrum feeding, is calf birth weight. As this varies depending on breed and gestation length the rule is to feed 8.5% of their birth body weight for their first feed, for example 3 liters for 35 kg calf. Some nutritionists recommend feeding 4 liter of colostrum to large breed calves immediately after birth to build high levels of blood antibodies. Calves may not consume much colostrum in the next feeding, do not force feed 4 liter was fed at the first feeding. 3. The calf should be allowed to drink colostrum during the first 4 days of life. Thanks.